This is the brand new Surface Pro OLED. And look, this is one of the coolest devices on the market. It always has been, but I feel like for years it's been held back by processors that were just too hot for this style of laptop. Like this is a super thin and light device. There's just not a lot of room for cooling. But finally, we finally have a processor that was meant for this. Like this new Snapdragon processor is perfect for this device. Now there's two variants of it. There's a Snapdragon X Plus chip, which comes with the LCD version of the Surface Pro. And then of course there's this guy, the Surface Pro OLED, which uses the more powerful Snapdragon X Elite. Now there's a lot of great things about this update, but there's a couple of things that might be deal breakers for some. Now, before I get into that, a quick message from today's sponsor. Now I've been hacked before and it's a nightmare I never want to relive. That's why I've been using Iolo System Mechanic Ultimate Defense to stay protected. It not only speeds up my PC, but also offers real-time protection against viruses and malware. With features like Active Care's one-click fixes and Privacy Garden, I feel secure knowing my personal info is safe. Plus the password manager keeps all my accounts protected. Right now they're offering 60% off using the coupon code Matthew60. Make sure to click on the link below to learn more. Now in my specific unit is using the Snapdragon X Elite. It's using the 80 variant, which means the dual core boost is active. And it does make a difference in a lot of situations, especially single core clock speeds. I noticed a massive difference compared to the other few Snapdragon laptops that I've just reviewed recently. The single core clock speed gets a lot closer to the MacBook Air with M3 and completely destroys the Intel Core Ultra and the AMD Ryzen processors that are currently available today. But there's a little bit of an issue because the Surface Pro OLED laptop only comes with a 39 watt charger. So this 80 variant of the Snapdragon X Elite is technically not getting all the power it deserves to truly push it. And I understand why Microsoft did this, because this is such a thin chassis. Like it's going to be very hard to cool a CPU if you're giving it more power than 39 watts. Now, miraculously, it still performs very well with the low wattage it's getting. Like if you look at the multi-core speeds, they beat out the 78 variant of the HP laptop that I reviewed recently, but obviously it doesn't come close to the VivoBook, which is using a 90 watt adapter. Now, if you're talking about Photoshop performance, it's very, very similar to other Snapdragon X Elite laptops that I've just reviewed recently. It actually had the fastest score when it came to my DaVinci Resolve render test, like it actually beat out the two other laptops with the lower power limit, which was very impressive. So that just tells me that dual core boost does make a difference in terms of everyday performance. Now look, I'm not gonna go too deep into gaming. You guys always yell at me that these are not gaming laptops and absolutely, especially this one, this is not a gaming laptop at all, but some of you still want to know. And yes, you can run Overwatch on this. If you disable super resolution in Windows, it will work. It will get a lot of drop frames, but the game is kind of playable. Valorant, which someone asked me earlier, cannot be played on this, most likely due to the Riot Vanguard anti-cheat system. It just won't load at all. Same with Fortnite, same with League of Legends, same with Call of Duty, same with any game that has like a very intense anti-cheat system. So that's kind of the story with the Snapdragon laptops. There's a lot of x86 apps that just won't work on this. Some do and they run fine and others just don't. Even something simple like Google Drive doesn't currently work on this. It's not a hardware issue. It's just a matter of time for these vendors to hopefully update some of their apps to support ARM. But that's okay because like most people who are buying this laptop are using it to draw right? They're using it to draw. They're using it for the browser. They're using it for Microsoft Office. And the chip inside of here just handles that so well. The battery life is incredible. In fact, the battery life on this is almost as advertised, whereas other vendors are like, yeah, it can last 22 to 24 hours. Microsoft says 14. I got about 13 hours and 33 minutes. So a little bit more accurate compared to the competition. But there's a lot going on here because there's some new hardware embedded inside of this that we haven't seen before. I wanna start off with this keyboard cover because this is the Flex 
keyboard cover. It's a little bit more expensive, but I personally feel you get a better experience. The keyboard itself is super clicky. It's a lot more spacious than the Magic Keyboard you'd get with the iPad Pro. You have a little cocoon here for your Slim Pen 2. There's zero stickers, which is nice to see, but most importantly, you have a new touchpad. It's a little bit wider and it's haptic. A haptic touchpad is way better than a glass one. Like, I love this thing. It feels so good to use. Of course, you have different levels of backlighting. I will say though, there are times where um, the keyboard or the mouse exactly doesn't get detected by the operating system and you have to detach it and then retach it. That does happen. But once everything's working, it's a flawless experience. Now, as for the pen, this is gonna be a hot take, okay? I prefer the Slim Pen 2 over the Apple Pencil. I do, I don't know. To me, as a lefty who has terrible writing, this just feels a lot more natural to hold. I know it's not circular like a pencil, but for some reason, I just like the way this feels, you know? And on top of all this, like when I'm drawing on it, because Microsoft has haptics in the pen, whenever I write on the display, it's so subtle, but it, it doesn't make the display feel like glass. It feels more paper-like and it just gives me the illusion that I'm writing on paper whereas with the iPad it feels like you're writing on glass and the only way to circumvent that is to put on let's say a paper-like sheet or maybe buy the nano textured version but this feels natural straight out of the box and like this entire package is only 1.97 pounds 2.75 ish once you add the keyboard making it a very light portable setup. But there is one thing that might turn some people off, and that's the OLED display. It's 120 hertz, like I said. It can dynamically switch if you take it off the charger. It can go to 60 hertz if you want to save some battery. The color gamut is absolutely fantastic. The color accuracy is amazing. The screen brightness is really good for an OLED display, like ridiculously good, even up to like 900 nits of peak brightness, which is incredible. But there's one thing that I don't like about this display, and there's a bit of a screen door effect. So what does that mean? Well, it means if you're watching content and playing games and you're mostly looking at like darker colors, it looks amazing. But as soon as you start reading text, especially white text, you can see a bit of a graininess in it. And to some people, it might throw them off because once you see something, it's hard to like not notice it again. And this is only really active on OLED displays that use touch. Now it's not on all OLED displays that use touch. It's on some, like I see it on this one specifically, like if I'm reading text, it can look a little grainy. Like, I don't know if you remember the old days of smartphones when OLED displays first came out, you'd have like weird sub pixel layouts and you could actually see the pixels. That's what you're kind of getting here. So right now you're looking at the 1440p webcam. Uh, most importantly, this is just using daylight in my office. There is no lights on right now. Uh, you guys let me know how it looks. And most importantly, how do the microphone sound? Fan noise is incredible. Like you will hear the fans if it's like under full load, but it never goes over like 42 decibels. Like it's such a quiet experience. In fact, the only Snapdragon X Elite laptop that I've tested so far where fans could get really loud is the VivoBook S15. And again, because that thing is just getting a lot more power. Now the overall design feels nice and comfortable in the hands. It's very rounded out on the edges. You do have two type C ports on one side. They're both USB 4.0, power button, volume rocker. And then of course you have your Surface Connect port. Unfortunately, there is no headphone jack, which would have been nice on a laptop like this, but you do have a 10 megapixel on the back of it, which is very handy for taking nice clean scans of documents, which I feel is like what most people will do with this camera, but you can't upgrade a lot in here. Like the only thing you can do is get quick access to your SSD. Now the SSD inside of here is a smaller form factor and surprisingly the read and write speeds are not bad. It's obviously not as fast as some other laptops with a full 2280, but for the size, it does a pretty good job. So two things before I wrap this up. One person just asked me in my short, if you can run Adobe Premiere Pro on this. As of right now, you cannot, they removed it from the store, but they are releasing an ARM version very soon. Number two, yes, you can detach the flex keyboard separately from the display and use it wirelessly. 
This feature only works with the Flex keyboard. It doesn't work with the regular Surface keyboard, which is a little bit cheaper than this. So keep that in mind. When it's connected, it uses the Surface pins on the bottom. When it's disconnected like this, it's using Bluetooth. So eventually the battery will get low and then you have to connect it again in order to charge it. But here's the thing. This is very expensive. Like the tablet plus the keyboard is well over $2,000. And for that price point, you could argue that you could buy, let's say, a cheaper light laptop and an iPad. I get it. But there's just something so special about this. Just like this all-in-one device, the way it's built, the way it feels, the way it's used that is just different from anything else out there. But I would also argue that you might be better off with the Surface Pro LCD. Not only is it a little bit cheaper, I don't feel like you're getting a lot more performance from this X Elite just because they kind of left it at 39 watts. So you're gonna get probably very similar performance with the LCD version. And for those of you that don't wanna look at the screen door effect, you're not gonna get that with the LCD model. So keep that in mind. Anyways, that wraps up my review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're interested in picking this up, there'll be links for this as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.